All right, so I thought I would turn on my camera and shoot a video on a topic that I think will change the way that you play, or at least the way that you visualize the fretboard. And I'm always fascinated with these little connection points, taking one concept that's simple and connecting it to another simple concept. Just things that you've already probably done, but maybe you haven't seen it quite in this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the easiest triad there is to play. This is a triad's just a chord with three notes. And uh, it's one that you can play with one finger. It's that easy. So we're gonna look at this triad and, uh, and we're gonna connect a lot of things to that. We're gonna connect a major scale to it, a mixolydian scale. We're gonna look at embellishment licks, different chord voicings, all kinds of things off of this one simple triad that you can play with one finger. So as I go through this lesson material, I'm gonna be putting some diagrams and some tablature up on the screen. However, if you're a premium member, I've consolidated everything into one PDF just to make it easier to reference so you have access to that. And there's also a little composition which we're gonna play at the end of this, which kind of ties it all together. You'll have access to the tablature for that as well. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com slash micro, M-I-C-R-O, and do a search for ML068. And so, uh, so the first thing I want to just mention is this chord, if I'm playing this here, and by the way, I'm only borrowing the first four strings, and I'm playing strings four, three, and two. When I'm playing it right here, I'm playing a C chord. And the way that I know that's a C chord is by the note name on my third string. So that's a C note, therefore, that's a C major chord. If I were to play here, that's a D note, that's a D chord. So hopefully you're getting that correlation there. Uh, and the other thing I just want to mention is the notes here. That's the one, that's the third interval, and that's the fifth. One, three, and five. Those are the intervals of the major scale for C because we're playing a C chord. So if I played the C major scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, and we took the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of that scale, that's where that chord comes from. Okay, so we got that out of the way. So the first little connection we're gonna make, this one's kind of obvious probably for most of you, but if we play the C chord using the A shape out of cage, the cage system, which I'm always talking about, always referring back to, um, you can see that that triad lives in there, right? So that's the, the C chord using the A shape. It also lives in the G shape. So again, we're playing a C chord, but we're using the G shape out of the cage system. Now when I play the G shape, I do it in two parts. I do part, the top part, and then I do this bottom part. I find that that's really the most useful way to use that. You would never really play the full thing. I can't even really do it with my, my hands, but that's what's going on there. So you have the top part of the G shape, the bottom part, and then you've got your A chord shape. And between all of that, the connective little piece here is that triad. So that's the first little thing I want to point out. A lot of you probably already knew that, but I wanted to mention that. Okay, the next thing I want to mention is that we can take this triad, and if I go, now remember, I'm playing a C chord here because we're on the fifth fret, but if I go to the sixth fret, one fret higher, and I go to the first string, and I add that note, I'm now playing a C7 chord, or C dominant seven chord. So just by adding that one note to that triad, I've converted it into a seven chord. And it makes sense if we go back to our A shape. Remember, this is kind of coming out of that A chord shape from Cage, but if we think of our A chord and then you play your A7, you can start to see that. Okay, there's your A7, I got it. So now if I do it up here, it's a C7 because the third note is your C note, right? Um, another place to play that is down here. And I love the sound of this and you don't hear this one as much, but I've still got the bar, still playing that little triad, but now I've got my ring finger, or you could use your pinky up here on the eighth fret, fourth string. That's another way to play that C7 chord. So you've got one here and one here. And so we're gonna get back, we're gonna come back to these as we introduce the Mixolydian scale and I'll show you how that scale works over uh, these two chord shapes. But that's the first thing I wanna point out. Actually, it's more like the third thing I'm pointing out. But anyway, uh, we got our seven chord, we've got our uh, A shape here, and we've got our G shape here. And it's all connected using that, that triad. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is making it a minor chord. And you know to make a minor chord, you just take your third interval. Remember, this is our one, this is our three, and that was our five. You take your third interval and you flat it, that's it. That's how you make a major chord into a minor chord. So to flat it, you go this way one fret. So now we use this note. A 
That's a C minor chord. It's still based on that little triad though. So now it's making sense. So if you look at that chord shape, it's the same chord shape as your A minor shape that you learn in first position. So hopefully some, some little connections are going to, oh yeah, okay, you got my A chord, I've got my A minor chord, I've got my A7, I've got the same thing here now. I've got my C chord, C minor, and C7. And the, th the only thing I want to mention about this is the reason people don't go here and don't connect this a lot of times, or at least the way the reason I didn't, I know, was in the beginning, I thought that chords, I didn't think you could just do little, you know, like three notes in the middle of the fretboard. I thought you had to be, they had to have a lot more notes in them. And it's not true. A chord is just three notes, like a major chord, a minor chord. They're just three notes. So you can play them anywhere. There's lots of spots you can play them. This one is just a really common one and it's very useful. And you're going to start to see why as we continue to to break this down. Okay, so we've got our minor chord now, our major chord, and our seven chord. Um, the next thing that I want to mention is the major pentatonic scale. So now we're going to get into scales, which will lead us into embellishments and licks that we can connect to this. This is where it starts to get fun. So we have that triad there on the fifth fret. And if I put my pinky up here on the eighth fret first string, look at this, we're going to play. Now that should look familiar. That's major pentatonic scale pattern one, right? So it's eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five. And inside of that major pentatonic scale pattern one is that triad. When I realized this one little thing, it changed the way that I played because I could start to go. Right? So you can now all these little things I'm talking about are starting to come out. There's the seven. Right? There's the major pentatonic scale. There's the chord. It's all there. And what's cool is there's no open strings here, so if I wanted to do this in C sharp. It's all right there. Right now, at the end of this, I'm going to give you a little sample of a, a song that we can do with this. But for for now, just, just kind of stick with me and, and let's let's learn all these concepts. So back to our C chord, we've got that major pentatonic scale. Now let's look at what we can do between the fifth fret and the seventh fret on strings five, four, and three. This is embellishments that are used all the time. I think of them as Hendrix embellishments. You hear it in country. You hear it in a lot of different things. And uh, there are things that you've probably played, but maybe you haven't connected them to this triad or connected them to this area that we're, we're talking about. Uh, here's what I'm talking about. There's the first one. We're gonna play strings five and four, just those two strings, and I'm hammering on to the seventh fret, fifth string. Now, where this is coming from is major pentatonic scale pattern one, which we're connecting all that back to this triad, remember? So now we have this little hammer on into the chord. It's kind of a cool, way to get into the chord. Now let's go up a string and play strings four and three now. Doing the same thing, hammering onto the seventh fret. There's another embellishment. Now remember, this embellishment is off of the C chord. So when you're playing a C in a song, you've got that. You've got that little chord that we just did at the bottom. And you've also got, if we play strings three and two, you can do the same hammer on, or well, same fret. So hammer on to the seventh fret, third string. Now that even just, if you get no further, if you get nothing else out of this. You have all of these little, I just call them embellishments off of the C chord. So if there's a song with a C in it now. You've got things you can do. And remember, you're not limited to just C. You can do it in any chord. You just take the triad and move it up wherever you want to move it and, and match the chord. You just have to know the note, note name on your third string. Okay, so those are some embellishments off of using the major pentatonic scale. Now let's talk about this double stop. This one's a really cool one. Now this is all, again, back to this triad here. We're gonna play strings two and three. Three and two, however you look at it. 
And uh, we're gonna start uh, with just those two notes out of the triad, and then we're gonna go into this position. Now, to do this, I've got my ring finger on the seventh fret third string, my middle finger is on the sixth fret second string. Now watch this, go up and go up again. So now you've got a C chord that's connected to, check this out, a C chord. A C triad that's coming up to this C triad. If we go back to our chord shapes out of the cage system, you've got your A shape down here that's connecti connecting to your E shape up here. These three fingers are making the E shape. But if I just look at strings two and three, that's that little shape that I just made. So now, here's my point in all of this. I just wanted to connect the, the C to the C, but you've got this embellishment. So if you need a pretty little harmony now off of a C chord, You've got this that you can play. You can bend. So you can get a kind of a country sound. You can do the blues. Like turn around blues stuff. You can get a lot of mileage. You can go the other way. Um, but that's a harmony that I use all the time. And in my head, it's still coming out of this triad. That's how I'm thinking about it. So think about all of these pieces we're talking about here. This is heavy stuff because you have tons of variables. So you've got... Little things you can do now, uh, you know, off of a chord shape. Um, okay, the last thing, actually the last two points I wanna make are that you can take this uh, concept and we can connect the major scale so let's look at the major scale. Now, it's the same as your major pentatonic scale. I started with that first on purpose because we're just gonna add two notes to the major pentatonic scale. So we're gonna start here with our pinky on the eighth fret first string. We're gonna come down to the seventh fret. That's one of our notes we're adding. Seventh fret first string. There's our second note we're adding, which will be the uh, sixth fret second string. So we have. And then we can come down to here. Now we can keep going down. There's that. There's the extra note again. Now that time I had to go past, you know, this way past the the uh, triad, there. but then back into. So that's our major scale. Now that obviously gives you things you can do like your major seven chord. Look, there's the triad. It's still there. You can play, you know, really little pretty fills and things using your major scale. Uh, the, the last one I wanted to point out, which I think is more useful in, in some ways when you're playing over chord changes, which we're gonna do sort of here at the end to tie all this together. But the last one is Mixolydian scale or Mixolydian mode. It's the same as your major scale. The only difference is you flat the seven. So remember, we just talked about intervals. So you take your seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's your major scale, but you flat it. So you have. Now I think the Mixolydian scale is easier to play than the major scale in this position because, check this out, watch the patterns here. So we have eight, six, five on the first string, eight, six, five on the second string, and then we have seven, five. And then from here we have eight, seven, five, eight, seven, five, Eight. Look how easy that is. It's just a lot of repeated patterns here. So it's and there is my major triad right there. Now the reason I wanted, I said earlier that I want to connect this to your dominant seven chord is because that scale is really made to go over this chord. Th those two work together. Now it doesn't mean that you always have to hear this chord in a song to improvise with Mixolydian mode. It just means that that chord and this scale are meant to fit together perfectly. And here's how you really need to practice playing this scale. You need to hear the notes. That's how you need to practice any scale. Just going through the motions, hitting the notes, isn't hearing the scale. You have to hear it. So what I would do when I was learning this scale is I'd play the seven chord and then do this. That's the connection, that's the, uh, the correlation, the relationship between the chord. That's the difference between that chord and then the major seven chord, which has the non-flatted seven. 
Hear the difference? Versus. And then come down to the, the other seven. So you you can hear it. So anyway, that's how I would practice it, is I would go back and forth between that flatted seven and the six, just to hear that, and then play the chord, and it sort of, you can see how it fits. In fact, even fingering-wise, you can see that I've got the chord here, and then I've got the scale that kind of runs through the chord. All right, so let's take a few pieces from these concepts that we've just gone through, and let's put it into a little composition. We're gonna do a one, four, five. So we're, we'll do it in the key of C, since we've been talking about a C chord, which means our chords would be C, F, and G. And let's look at that triad. C, F, because there's my F note, and then G, because there's my G note. So what that means is, watch this, we're gonna play the chord changes using this concept. Now this isn't the most efficient way to do it, but it's a great way to hear it and to practice it and to start having fun, honestly, and making music. So you have something like this. Now, if you're a premium member, you will have this tabbed out. I've got a tabbed out version of this for you. Just go to activemelody.com slash micro, M-I-C-R-O, and do a search for ML068. All right, well, hopefully you've picked up a few ideas from this and can apply this to your playing right away, all from this simple triad that you can play with one finger. All right, we'll see you in the next video.